you want to look like a baller, get yourself a Range Rover extended wheelbase SV. However, if you're a baller with a very tight budget, why not get yourself an old 2004 Range Rover autobiography? This car cost me just £2,000. The list price of that new, £200,000. This is 100 times cheaper than that. How different do they feel? The Range Rover is a style statement. Just look at it. It's so recognisable and it has an air of royalty about it. It's also not shine retiring with this big Range Rover badge on the front. And this particular version being the SV is especially not so shine retiring. You can spec SV models up with more personalisation than standard cars. And this one has this chrome effect here on the grill. Look at the wide lower grill here just gives the car so much presence. Moving down the side, I'll tell you what also helps with that. 23 inch alloy wheels with the matching bronzy bits there and matching bronzy bits here. Yet the design, the way it slopes away to the rear just looks really cool. And once again, we've got bronzy bits and this is a proof it's a modern car. Look, poppy outy door handlesy. Come on, there we go, which obviously go flush when you lock the car to just help with that sleek look. In fact, it's so sleek. Where are the window rubbers? Where, where, where? Look, I can't see them. They're hidden, aren't they? Round the back. You know, this is a biggish, squarish vehicle. Yeah, it just manages to look strangely sleek. Now to the £2,000 Range Rover, and you can see the family resemblance, you know, this is clearly the new one's ancestor, isn't it? But it's not quite so sleek, it's more blocky. And there's some funny things going on which hark back to the era. Look at this. We've got little wipers for the headlights. Also, coming closer, <laughs> check this, the badging. Used to be silver, but now it's sort of gone yellow because all the silvery bits have come off. This isn't actually the right grill for this particular version. This is from the facelift and whoever owned this car before fitted this to make it look a bit more modern by about two years. Wow. Oh, this is um, the um, new type of... Um, See round corner indicator and fog light design look because it, it, it pivot. It doesn't pivot. It doesn't. It's just broken. It's just one of those things. OK, let's move down the side a little bit. So once again, this is aftermarket -y or from the facelift version. And we've got some. Oh, look, they've tried to bling it up here with some chromey door handles, which aren't original. But generally, the bodywork is looking pretty blooming good until we get to this rusty area here. We haven't got a two tone roof on this car. And you think how sleek and long that new one looks. This is very much more a traditional boxy SUV. Moving to the back, very boxy, but once again, you can sort of see the family resemblance to the newer car. There is one thing I should point out about this car, look. Oh dear, someone's keyed it. To be fair, two grand car, you key it. It's unfortunate, you'd rather they didn't, but it's not the end of the world. Imagine someone keying that brand new one. You'd be gutted. One of the things that Land Rover has done for this latest Range Rover is take it up to another level in terms of luxury. They want it to be able to compete with the likes of the Bentley Bentayga. As a result, it's really super luxurious. The material quality on this one, there's leather absolutely everywhere. The paddle shifters, look for the automatic gearbox, solid metal. And this is a sign of luxury and quality. Look at those. You know, <laughs> the grab handles, just the mechanism, the feel of them, and the metal elements to them. Gorgeous. Smells expensive in here as well. And obviously, we've got new technology, like a digital driver's display, a huge infotainment screen. Though, actually, if you buy one of these now, you get an updated infotainment screen, which puts the climate controls within the screen, which I'm not a fan of. So progress isn't always a good thing. And this car here has the old setup where the climate controls are separate. Look, yes, that's what I like. That's better. This being the SV has these strange ceramic-y elements around the dials on the gear selector and the other knobby bits. And of course, being a modern car, we've got some tech in here. Let's have a look what's in there. Ooh, fridgy. But more importantly, in here, we have USB-C for the infotainment system and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You've got a dual glove box. This one, look, you can see it's electrically operated, the release buttons, look, there. Because modern, 
People expect that, don't they? Especially when you're paying £200,000. Back in its day, this Range Rover's interior was considered luxurious. And being the autobiography, we have the lovely two-tone leather. It's actually worn pretty well, this leather. What's not worn so well? The steering wheel. It, yeah, the leather's wearing out, isn't it, there? But the buttons, you know, they'll work. And Ooh, heated steering wheel. Is that one working? That'll be a no. Well, the light isn't coming on anyway. Now, it does look its age down here, but everything's controlled by knobs. Yes. So like your temperature, we have dual zone climate, but I have tested this already. The air conditioning light comes on, but it don't get air conditioning cool. That is pretty standard on a car like this of this age. Always check the air conditioning. Does have an infotainment system though. Look, oh, hello. And it's a touch screen won't be bothering with the sat nav and there's certainly no apple carplay or android auto if you want that kind of thing you're going to be fitting your own aftermarket system which will probably cost about a quarter of the value of the car anyway let's check out the glove box there's only one on this older version and to open it you press a more physical button look it's not electrically operated it's a release and the damping it's either gone or wasn't there in the first place this is interesting though the wooden paneling it's real wood it's not that bad i don't mind it although i do prefer the one in the new car just like with the new car you have the captain chairs armrests which are really nice it doesn't have all the blingy ceramic bits added to it like you have on that sv overall though, i don't mind it inside i wonder if it's got a fridge no it's got an old look an old mobile phone holder there with some there's some dirt no, no fridge under there but a 12 volt socket you won't be finding any usbs and what's this bit what's this bit what's this bit that's <laughs> that's a that's a cup holder right <laughs> will that go back yes it does and look is this another one yes do you know what? These are the kind of things that often get broken in older cars, but here they seem to work. Do I dare to open the sunroof? Mm, I'm not sure if I do, because sometimes with old cars, you open them and they never shut again. I'm not gonna risk it. Before we go any further, let's do a door test. So, I'm just gonna slam it. Mm, sounds quite damped. Actually, I know why that is. Look, it's got soft close, hasn't it? You don't have to slam it. It'll close itself. This old car. Does that sound a little bit more solid? No, I'm not sure. You be the judge of that, but there's definitely no, no, no soft close. Back to modern day and £200,000 worth of Range Rover. And here in the back seats, this SV model is on another level to any other Range Rover ever. Being the extended wheelbase version, look. Look how much knee room I've got. There's loads of headroom as well. Speaking of which, check out this leather headliner. I mean, that is just so luxurious. So too are these seats. Look at them. Now, this particular car is fitted with the upgraded two-seater rear seat system rather than the standard three-seater and it's got all the mod cons so there's this screen where i control everything so what i can do is press this button here fridge now watch what happens i can open this fridge here which contain my glass tumblers oops almost broke one that would have been awkward close then have a look at this <laughs> if i press this button here Watch the cup holder come out. Look at that. <laughs> that is over engineered. And then if I press this button here, watch the table. And now let's see how you operate it like this. Bring it towards you and you sort of rotate it. Yeah, obviously just for your drinks. Although I suppose you could work on it at an angle. Let's put that away again, because I do like the way it operates, away you go. And the cup holders, I mean, this is overkill. Look at that. Absolutely fine on a brand new car that's under warranty. <laughs> if this was on that 20 year old car, not sure they'd still be working. Anyway, let's move on to the seats, which once again, I'm gonna operate through here. Seats, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recline. Look at this, look at this. It's all happening now. 
And as well as reclining the seats, you can heat them and there's a massage function. I love the foot rest there, look. It's own bit of carpet. This is taking its time. I suppose I can show you that I've got look, blinds. There we go. In fact, that's so far away, I can barely reach it. There is so much space back here, <laughs> look. <laughs> I could go to sleep. I'd probably sit back though and watch a movie on one of these screens and once again, control these through this system. And you have Bluetooth headphones there, which you can listen to your movie on so that your driver doesn't have to hear the fact that you're watching The Crown on Netflix, obviously. It's interesting to think that the luxury seat upgrade in that new SV is six times more expensive than the entirety of this car. And I've got to be honest, here in the back, it does feel quite nice. It feels way nicer than £2,000 would suggest. The leather, once again, like in the front, has worn well, though this could just do with a clean. And it's not extended wheelbase like the SV, but knee room's still good. There's plenty of headroom, though that does bring me on to this headline. I don't know what's going on there. Yuck. It's a bit saggy, like some old knickers. And it's certainly not luxurious leather, is it? Though the actual leather on the seats, that's quite luxurious. Now, in terms of tech, we have heated rear seats and a 12 volt. We had a 12 volt socket. We don't really have one anymore. We'll just leave that like that, old cars. However, we do have a Harman Kardon stereo system. And you could on this particular car get some screens in the rear, though they were pretty old fashioned. I've got to show you the cup holders. Nothing like on the SV, but they're here, neatly hidden in the back of the central headrest. It's good that all these hinges and stuff still work. You know, for 2000 pounds, that's impressive. Less impressive is this saggy piece here, but it was like that from new. That's nothing to do with the fact that this is an old car. I think I've actually bought a bit of a blinder with this because the quality is impressive. Let's just have a look under these mats though. Come on. What is that hiding? Nothing. It looks like those mats have done their job. Whoever owned this car has taken great care of it. There's only one last thing I want to say is that while we have a sunroof here, Unlike the one in the SV, it doesn't extend into the rear. However, the rear windows themselves are so huge and the ledge so low that you get a brilliant view out and they let lots of light in. So it always feels nice and airy back here. It's a good car, this. Range Rovers are famous for their split tailgates. And obviously on this latest version, it is electric. The lesser sport model doesn't get this system though. It has a normal tailgate. There are disadvantages to it. End up getting jabbed in the thighs when you're leaning to get things in from the very back of the boot. Now this one has lots of tech on it. So look, there's the load cover, but you don't pull it with your hands. On this car, I press a button. Might say that's a bit unnecessary, especially when the car's out of warranty and it uh, might go wrong, but nonetheless, it has it. And then there's this other feature. This being the special seat system in the rear, you can only fold down one of the rear seats and it's this one. So I'm gonna fold down the right seat. I can explain that you can also raise and lower the ride height to make it easier to load or unload items. And there's a seat folding down. It doesn't actually go all that far. I think if you have the normal five seater, they will all fold down. Anyway, to save you the hassle of like, you know, putting that back and putting these back separately, just press this button and everything should work at once. Yeah, there the load cover's going as well. Oh, the technology. The boot on this old Range Rover is also electric, but it's only the release mechanism. So there we go. And the lower part. Oh, how that dropped so elegantly. Now let's have a quick look in the boot. We don't have any retractable parcel shelf. You have to do it manually, but I don't really want to touch it because look at that, it's a bit grimy. The boot isn't quite as big as in the new car, but the carpet lining's all right. Just please don't look down there because it gets a little bit more, yeah. But once again, we've got like this boot liner. So the owner has taken care of it. It means the carpet underneath is actually faring quite well, but these metal parts around here have got a bit rusty. So there must be some water ingress somewhere, maybe. Yeah, that's all damp and smelly. And we've got a lot of gravel. Can you see the gravel? At least we've got a full-size spare wheel. The SV didn't come with one, although there is space 
Looks like the previous owner has left us some things in the boot. We've got a couple of, oh, are these the rear wings that we could put on to replace those rusty ones? Although the color, does that match? It's close-ish, isn't it? Now I'm going to put the tailgate back together. So there's no button to press though, because one of the gas struts has gone in this part of the boot lid. It kind of shuts itself at some point. Oh, last thing to point out, this one came with a tow bar and the car has a towing capacity of three and a half tons, which is really useful. However, if you have the tow bar on the latest Range Rover, obviously it's electrical. This Range Rover SV may well be as luxurious as a limousine, but it's still a proper hardcore off-roader and you've got some tech to help you out. So you've got four wheel drive system with an electronically controlled central and rear differential. They just figure out what to do. You don't have to tell the car. You've also got a weight sensing system, which will measure how deep the water is you're driving through, and it can weigh up to 90 centimeters. Yeah. Then you've got your special terrain response mode. So by turning this dial, you can change from road driving to driving on grass, gravel, snow, mud and ruts, sand, rock crawl, or for wading. And you can also configure your own. There is, of course, a low range mode, which you just get into by pressing this button here and hill descent control, which you can alter the speed of. With this car, you can drive off-road without really having to think about it. This old car is much simpler. So you put it into low range mode by flicking this switch and then it'll lock the central differential as well. You've got hill descent control there and you can alter the height of the air suspension here. And that's pretty much your lot. The new Range Rover comes with lots of engine choices. So you can have this 4.4 litre twin turbo V8, 530 horsepower. But there's also two plug-in hybrids, both use a straight six turbo petrol, and you can just get a normal three litre straight six turbo petrol. Plus you can get a three litre straight six diesel. However, with this old Range Rover, there's two choices. You can have the one that's in this car, which is the 4.4 litre natural aspirated V8 with 286 horsepower or a three litre diesel. Both those engines are from BMW, though tell you the truth, the 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 in that car is also from BMW. Now they've actually updated that engine. So if you buy one of these now, you'll get similar engine, but with 600 horsepower. Let's have a look. Oh, anyone got a tissue? Oh. <sighs> so funny, this dipstick is just the same as on my BMW X5. Now the one my X5 is broken, that bit, see that? That sometimes snaps. So what I might do is nick this and put it in my BMW. Anyhow, this give it a quick dip with my stick. That's ah, well, well over, isn't it? Oh dear, that's not good for the engine. I'm gonna check one more thing. All right, let's just undo the oil cap. That looks all right. I'm glad there's no kind of like milky residue because that could suggest head gasket issues with some water getting into the oil. Shall I bother checking the new one? Um, let's just do it. Oh. Look, similar design. This one has been filled properly because it's been lent to us by Land Rover's press office. Anyway, shall we have a listen to the different sounds the engines make? Let's start off with the new Range Rover, rev it up. Does this have a soft limiter? Yeah. Yeah, that's a yes. Anyway, let's have a listen to the old one. That's a million times better. Does this have a soft limiter? Of course not. Nah, of course not, I knew it didn't. So that's a win to the old Range Rover, but there is one thing that's not as cool on this. So put your foot on the brake. Yeah, classic old fashioned. Probably look cool in its day, actually. Look, it's almost like LEDs. Eh, it's not, it's lots of little bulbs. Anyhow, look, you can't see the lights on the back of the new Range Rover until the lights come on. And then you get this soft light effect. Put your foot on the brake. Mm, expensiveness. Before I drive these cars, let's just see what we're dealing with. So obviously this car is less than a year old and it's done just under 7,000 miles. Let's see what the odometer of the old car is doing. This Vogue autobiography is almost 20 years old. And over that lifetime, it has covered 173,098 miles. You know the mass, that works out to just under 9,000 miles a year. It's 
not that much really. Now notice this, the odometer is a little bit dark, you see maybe a bulb's gone behind it, but often with these displays, the pixels go. So this one's doing quite well. Same is true of the main infotainment screen. They can be quite like patchy with pixels missing, but this one is tip top. I wonder if it'll drive tip top. Let's start off by familiarizing myself with this lovely new Range Rover. This is pretty much the benchmark for luxury SUV of the modern era of today. You sit up really high, commanding view of the road like you're supposed to get from a Range Rover. Since the very first Range Rover was introduced, what's a little bit different now though, is that it feels less agricultural to drive down a twisty road. What's really surprising about this car is how it actually handles on the road much better than you think that something like this would. You've obviously got all the relaxed, luxury SUV-like nature, the kind of thing that you, know, you expect from a Range Rover. But unlike the Range Rovers from the past, it's just got all the tech on board to enable it to go around corners much better than you'd imagine. I mean, it's no sports car and it's no Porsche Cayenne even, but by Range Rover standards, it's blooming good. You can whip along a country road like this, no problem at all. And it does it in such serenity, incredibly comfortable suspension. It's a very, very good, well-rounded luxury product. They have nailed it. The steering even. Like before, if you did that in an old Range Rover, it just go and nothing would really happen. Whereas now it is actually responding. And I haven't even put the car into its dynamic mode where it'll firm up the suspension and just make it a little bit more pointy. So what I'm gonna do now is a U-turn. And it's a big car, this. Yeah, the turning circle is 11.5 meters. That's thanks to the rear axle steering, which is gonna turn the rear wheels in the opposite direction of the front right now as I make this turn. So I don't have to worry about curbing my absolutely massive wheels. Look at this, there's so much room. That's incredible. Modern tech. It's brilliant until it becomes less modern and then starts to go wrong, which um, yeah, we might find out a little bit about that with the old Range Rover in a moment. For now though, I'm just gonna enjoy this thing. So let's go into dynamic mode. So the car's got a bit more responsive. It's even making a little bit more of a roarty noise from its engine. It's nice and punchy. It's got enough performance, air suspension, even though I've gone into the sportier setting is just riding over these bumps nicely. It's got so much composure. What a thing. Do you know what? That's enough like hooning around. I'm actually going to go back into comfort mode. Come in, where are you? And you notice the suspension slacken off. The steering's a little less heavy. The gearbox doesn't quite change down so quickly. But I have to say the gearbox itself, so, so smooth. Really, really smooth. Doesn't mess about too much. It picks the gear that you need when you need it. Nice. Blimey, that's bright. Thankfully, the Range Rover has big sun visors. That'll help me out. We've also got self-driving tech here, so lane keeping assist, auto cruise, and all that kind of stuff, which is brilliant for when you're just doing loads and loads of miles in this car, which it's so relaxing to do because of these seats and how quiet it is. And don't forget, you've got speakers in the headrest which can cancel out outside noises. That's clever. That's modern tech. I'll tell you what's also a bit more modern about this. Maybe a big old car, with a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8, but it's doing 25.4 miles to the gallon. That is pretty impressive. I wonder what the old one's doing. That it's not that. We'll find out in a bit. Beforehand though, we're just gonna see what kind of performance this beast delivers. Now this big car, even though it weighs 2.7 tonnes, should be able to do 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. I'm going to time it, put it into sports mode for the gearbox, sports mode for driving. Especially it's timing it up there, let's give it a goo. What we got, what we got? 4.96 seconds, considering I'm driving on a rough old surface. It's pretty blooming good for something this big and luxurious. Wow. I wonder what the performance is like in the old one. Here I am then, back in 2004. The first thing I notice, it just feels like a much smaller vehicle on the road. I'm sitting up high, and I have raised my seat a bit, but it just doesn't seem quite as high as in the new car. And certainly, the bonnet doesn't feel quite as expansive. Once again, we've got air suspension which is good, but no adjustable modes. And we have a 4.4 litre V8, 
but this one's naturally aspirated and so it doesn't have the punch but it makes a nice noise looks like um, the steering wheel isn't pointing dead ahead even though the car's going straight so it's a bit skew if the suspension itself though it's dealing with the bumps really well you do have to remember that this car has so much more tire sidewall than the new one with its massive wheels and that really does help in fact you could spin it the other way and go it's just so impressive how that big new car which is heavier and has much bigger wheels is able to go down the road even smoother than this one one thing i'm definitely noticing there we go there it is ain't nothing happening nothing <laughs> This definitely doesn't go around the bends with anywhere near the confidence as the new car. And the brakes, they're not filling me with confidence either. They're just, yeah, I don't know whether it's this particular car, but they feel like old brakes. Gearbox is all right, five-speed auto. It's not as responsive as the one in the new car, obviously. And this is the interesting thing, turning circle. In this, it's more than that extended wheelbase version of the new car, 11.6 meters made that round and I was quite close to the curb and if I'd been in the other car I'd been using all my electronic devices and my cameras to see exactly how close I was to the curb with this one just didn't care because it's a 2000 pound car I have to say though for the money this drives really really well the engine is quite responsive that's the benefit of it being naturally aspirated compared to turbocharged like in the new car but while it responds quickly it's uh, yeah it doesn't fulfill on its promises quite so much <laughs> bit more wind but quite a lot more wind noise obviously unlike the new car there's no noise cancelling tech and maybe some of the seals are gone or just back then they weren't so good at really making this car as quiet as possible you think with every iteration Land Rover just increase the luxury factor of their Range Rovers and this is just further back down that luxury ladder this gearbox is changing gears a lot, actually. Look at that, yeah, it does. Yeah, I've got it in normal mode, it's not sport, is it? There is sport, sport, oh, I can change, oh, sport mode, I can change gears myself, let's have a go at that. Obviously in the new car you've got paddles, but there's push forward to go up, which seems wrong. Racing cars, it's like back to go up. And then back to go down. Do I feel like this is giving me a 2,000 pound experience? No, oh, I think it feels better than that. I think it's going to continue feeling better than that. Up until the point that first scary warning light appears on the dash. So far in this test drive, one hasn't arrived, which I must admit I'm a little bit surprised at. Though I've been told that the fuel gauge doesn't work on this. So it gets about halfway, then it stops responding. A bit annoying because this thing is only averaging 18 miles to the gallon which is incredible, really. Not for this car, it just once again puts it into context how much more efficient that modern Range Rover is. <laughs> this is brilliant. And one of the most interesting things is, it's actually ULES exempt. Anyway, last thing to try, let's test the performance. This car has 286 horsepower, weighs in at 2.4 tonnes, and is supposed to do 0-60 in 8.5 seconds. Let's test it. How many horses have escaped? This might reveal all. That's interesting. I'd say none. Bang on the money. Absolutely slap bang on the money. 8.48. This is a good one, this. So then, what's my final verdict? Well, the new Range Rover is blooming lovely, but I've got to be honest, it's not 100 times better than this. But this is just unbelievably cheap. £2,000 is an absolute steal, and it's got a year's MOT on it. So it should all be fine as long as it doesn't break. But if it does break, do you know what? Just write it off. Scrap it. Don't even bother trying to fix it. Give up, because you're only down... £2,000. And to put that into perspective, the alloy wheels on this car cost £3,000. This is a bargain. This is just gorgeous. We've come to the end of the day and um, we've been filming the car static and it's not working. Look, the key won't actually turn. Could it be that the battery's sort of gone or has it just lost its mind? Oh, right, there we go.
What was that all about? He wouldn't let me turn the key, but now it is. It won't start though. Is this going straight in the bin after this video? <laughs> let me go get the booster pack and see if it's okay. Um, that's ignition on. Let's get that bonnet up. I'll be back. A few moments later. So normally you press boost. There we go. Well, there we go. Look, we left the lights on and it's making a weird ticking sound, but I think we're good. Flat battery, simple as that. It's fine. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you want to watch some more videos, click on those windows there and click on that box to go to CarWow to change your car the easy way. Thanks for watching.